For the first time ever, MacOS 10 Server includes a calendar server for users and groups to coordinate events, schedule meetings, reserve resources, and use time more effectively. iCal Server uses the Open CalDAV standard for integration of leading calendaring programs, including iCal 3 built into Leopard. So let's see how it works. Here we have a Leopard system, and I'm going to go ahead and launch the new iCal that's part of Leopard. And so this is the brand new iCal 3 in Leopard. And we see on the left-hand side a list of calendars, and they're organized based on my own personal calendars. These are calendars that are on this local system, as well as calendars that I have hosted on a server. So uh, these first two are, the again, my own personal calendars, uh, where I keep track of my own events. And on the server is where I have all my work-related events. And so all the red events here are my iCal server-based events. And if I want to look at any one of them, I can just double-click on it and get additional details about this meeting, where its location is, does it repeat uh, or not, and who the attendees are. And I see that I can already accept this meeting, but if I want to change my mind, I can go back here and change that option. Further down in this column, we also see a list of notifications. These are meetings that I've been invited to, and so I see there's a meeting called Hardware Updates. I want to get more information about it. I can just double click on it. And I see this meeting's been organized by Lynn. And uh, again, these are all the list of attendees uh, that are invited to this meeting. And again, I can choose to accept this, decline this, or um, make a decision later. I'll go ahead and accept this. So this is how you would interact with um, iCal as far as being able to uh, view the events you have as well as being able to accept meetings from other people. Let's go ahead and actually propose a meeting and we can see how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and let's uh, set up a meeting for tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. And I'll give this um, a title. Let's call this Postmortem. And for the location, I can pick uh, some location, but I also have a lot of locations in my directory server. So I can go to my address panel. And here I see a list of all the people, locations, and resources within my organization uh, that are reservable, that are part of the iCal server. And so I can just go ahead and drag and drop. Maybe I want to have this meeting in the Waimea conference room. Just drag and drop that into the location, and I see that that room is available, so that's great. And uh, let's, um, this is just a meeting that's going to happen just once, so there's no repeating for it. And uh, let's go ahead and add some attendees. So uh, let me see, I want to invite Eric, and as you can see, it automatically does uh, address completion. So we'll add Eric into the list of attendees. I want to add Doug, and let me also add Lynn to the meeting as well. So there we go. I've got a meeting, and I've invited uh, Eric, Doug, and Lynn to participate in this meeting, and I can go ahead and just send out this invite. And so when uh, either one of those folks log in through their iCal application, they'll see a notification from me, and they're invited to that meeting. Now, one of the challenges when you have a lot of people in an organization want to try to schedule meetings is uh, you don't know who's available, who's not available. And so iCal has this great little availability panel. So if I were to go back to my meeting here and go to my availability panel, I can graphically see who's available, who's not available, and I can even have iCal go out and search and find the next available time slot if that particular time is not working for everybody. But fortunately, this time is working, so um, we're in good shape here. Now, for the iCal account itself, we have a lot of preferences. So let's go ahead and look at that. So here's my iCal server account. As you can see, the password field is empty. And that's because we're using Kerberos and single sign-on, so we're not actually transferring any password information um, between the two systems. It's very secure. Um, we can also see server settings, what my account URL is. And uh, this is somewhat important. We can also have uh, delegation uh, support into iCal. So if you have an administrative assistant that you want to have them access to your calendar or if you want to provide um, your calendar to your colleagues so they can see what exactly you're doing, uh, you can do that straight from here. And um, you can even go ahead and add additional people in here so they can view uh, your calendar and you can just make it read-only or actually let them to schedule meetings and events right into your calendar. So that was iCal working with iCal Server. And as you saw, it was a very easy to use group calendaring solution that you can use within your organization, all based on the open standard CalDAP protocol. For more information, please visit apple.com business.